Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. I want to thank you for tuning in to my channel today. If you're one of my regular subscribers, I want to especially thank you guys for your support. If you're brand new to the channel, I hope you enjoy this uh, video and will consider clicking on subscribe and sharing my, video, my channel with your friends and others that might enjoy uh, learning more about astrophotography. Today we're going to talk about a new piece of software that I've started using called Nina. Now many of you may be familiar with Nina already. It's called Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy. It is a free open source capture program that really is incredible. It is meant to uh, sort of do a lot of the same things that Sequence Generator Pro would do. Now, since I've been doing astrophotography, everything that I've done with Deep Sky has always been done in um, astrophotography tool. And I really still like astrophotography tool, um, but uh, there are some features about Nina that really make it attractive. And I've got to tell you, I really enjoyed using this piece of software for the very first time. So what I'm going to do today this is a rather long video, so I, subscribe, I apologize up front for its length. But what I'm going to do is do a little overview of the basic features and sort of the interface uh, that uh, uh, comes with Nina. Then I'm going to show you how I used Nina and Stellarium to plan a sequence. And then I want to show you how I started that sequence. Now, I'm not going to be able to show you all of the night's imaging and all of that kind of stuff. Quite frankly, we ended up getting some clouds. We ended up getting some problems, and I wasn't able to go back in and, and kind of finish things out. Um, but I do want to show you how easy it is, once you've got your sequence started, to image with Nina. It really boiled down to uh, clicking on a button, and Nina takes care of the focusing, the plate solving. Um, it took care of everything. I was blown away by it. So I want to show you how that works today. And then at the end, I want to show you the finished project. What I've been doing was imaging the um, horse head and flame nebulas. Now you'll see at the end of this, I'm going to ask your, for your indulgence here. I'm going to call that whole area Max's Nebula. And the reason for that is on the night that I was doing the main imaging for this uh, object, I uh, had, was the was the night that my first grandson Max was born, and so man, I'll tell you that's the greatest thing uh, that's happened to me for a long time. Uh, love him to death. He's a, it's very exciting to have a grandson, and so I've kind of affectionately named this Max's nebula and i'm going to have it turned in to a poster and get it framed to put in his room i'll show you all that at the end so stick around by the way if there's L, there, this is a long video so i did post at in the uh, descriptions some places that you know if you're just interested in watching how to start the sequencer i've shown you where that's at i've kind of broken it down so you you don't have to watch the whole long video if you don't want to but I sure would appreciate it if you would. Stick around. We're going to jump into Nina as soon as I come back. Okay, let me start out here by showing you how you can download this piece of software. Um, if you type in in your browser nighttime-imaging.eu, it will bring you to this page, the Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy page. And um, you can read all about Nina here. It will tell you all about uh, some of its features, um, uh, you know, how it can control your equipment and, and do all kinds of amazing things that really you would have to pay a lot uh, for something like Sequence Generator Pro or, or another software package to really get all of these features. To download it uh, for free, just click on download. And you have a couple of options here. This uh, top version here is the uh, latest stable version, but you can also download the beta version, which will give you some of the latest um, uh, features. Now, um, again, these will have some bug fix fixes, enhancements, that type of stuff. And um, 
it, it is possible that you run into occasionally a stability problem, but so far with the beta, I've had no problem. That's what I'm running. You can also download the nightly build. Now, this could be quite unstable, by the way, and so uh, you might uh, struggle with it. But if you, if you want to do that, you can do that. Just click on one of these, uh, whichever option you want, you can download the software. Another uh, thing that I want to point you towards is if you have additional information or uh, questions about how to run uh, Night uh, Nina and uh, really want to get into the nuts and bolts, there is a uh, YouTube site off, over here called Quiv the Lazy Geek. And I've actually subscribed to his channel. Quiv is amazing. This guy has everything you'll ever want to know about a whole lot of subjects. He makes it easy, makes it simple. He's got an entire uh, playlist here uh, just for Nina and uh, for, for working with it. Down here, Nina set up an in-depth tutorials. He's got all kinds. Let me, let me back this off here for just just a minute. Whoops. I meant to click on view full playlist. You'll see here he's got all kinds of, of, um, of uh, videos that will walk you through every step with Nina. And so that's how I've been learning it. But I wanted to point that to you. Let's go over tonight. Let me give you a quick run through a quick breakdown of Nina. Then I'll show you how I set up my sequence and how it, I ran it on the very first night of imaging. Okay, let's start out, since Nina is new to many of us, let's just walk through real quick this basic interface. When you open Nina up, this is the tab that you're going to be looking at. Um, you'll notice that down the side here, there is a number of uh, tabs that you can click on. For instance, here in Equipment, uh, if you're on the Equipment tab, this will let you set up and hook up to all of your equipment. So for instance, if I click on camera, now I can go in, I can select from my two cameras that I have hooked up, the ZWO224. If I want to uh, um, uh, connect it, I click on connect. It will connect up uh, to the uh, uh, to, to my uh, uh, ZWO224. Then I can set my default gain, offset, all of those kind of things. Um, if I wanted to go over, and that's my actually my guide camera, but if I was uh, wanting to image, here's my ZWO183, connect up to it. And that's going to allow me to, you know, turn on the cooling, turn off, you know, or turn it off, turn on the warming, adjust my default gain, default offset, all of those kind of things. That gives me all the setup for my camera. Uh, same way, if I go down, it allows me to turn on my focuser. If you've got a filter wheel, a rotator, your telescope, all of these things, this is where you're going to set up and connect your equipment. We'll go ahead and walk through that later on when we actually get ready to image. I just wanna walk through these tabs real quick. So this is where you set up all of your equipment and connect to it. If you need to make adjustments to it, you know, as you go along, this is where you do all of that. Sky Atlas, this is a really, really helpful little tool. If you have not planned uh, in the evening, this will show you what's available to you uh, in the night sky right now to image. And so you can walk through here and you can click on these different um, uh, options here and um, you can refine your search a little bit. You could set this by constellation, uh, by coordinates, surface brightness, apparent size, apparent magnitude, minimum altitude. You could set all of that up. And then if you pick something out, let's say we wanted to you know, image Barnard 7, we can then set that for framing assistant or just go right to it and set it as a sequence target. We'll talk more about those options uh, in a little bit, you know, a little bit later. But we could also slew directly to it. So this is where if you, you know, went out, set up and you weren't sure what you were going to image, this would be a great tool to walk through there, find what's available to you in the night sky and help you get set up. Now, your framing assistant um, will be uh, to help you. Let's let's just pick one of these objects out here. Okay, let's set LDN 1641, and we're going to set it for framing assistant. What that will do then was come over and will open up this framing tab. 
And what this is going to allow us to do is work on how we want to set up and position the camera and our setup for imaging this particular object. And you'll notice what it does. It's going to go through here. You have a number of options for image sources. I like this HIPS2 FITS Sky Survey, but there's a number of other options that you could choose. Um, and it's going to bring you up a picture. Let me go ahead and, and make this a picture um, uh, fit in the whole window here. You'll notice this white box. This is my camera. Now, I actually have my camera rotated right now 90 degrees. So if I go ahead and punch that in, and all I'm doing here is tapping on my um, mouse uh, on this rotation, I can turn this to 90 degrees. And uh, so now I've got my orientation set up. And this isn't uh, that cool of an object to look at here, but we could, uh, we could uh, zoom in just a little bit there. Now what I can do is I can actually move this around, okay? So if I wanted to, I can actually move this box around like this and decide exactly how I want to frame my picture. Once I have that all set up, then I can simply click on add a sequence target or um, replace a sequence target. If we were creating a new sequencing plan, we just add a sequence target, click on that, and that's going to take us over to the next page, sequence. This is where we would actually set up our sequence that we want to image for the night. Now, what I actually want to do, though, is show you another tool. This is, that was very helpful if you are going out at night, setting up, you're not sure what you want to image, and just setting up something very quickly to get an image. There's also the option, if you want to do some advanced planning, to be able to connect up to Stellarium. And so let's go and look at how we do that. Okay, what I want to do now is show you how to plan an imaging session using Nina and Stellarium. So let's say you want to plan a couple of days ahead of time what you want to image. That's the way I do it. Um, what you're going to want to do, first of all, is come over here to your Options tab, clear over here on this side of the page, go under Equipment and Planetarium, and set up whatever planetarium software you're going to use. I'm going to select Stellarium because it's my favorite um, um, uh, planetarium software, okay? You want to pay attention here to what port this is going to send all this information to, and I'll show you why in a moment. Now, go over to Stellarium, and one of the things that you're going to need to do is go down here under the configuration window, and you make sure you go down to remote control, configure, make sure that you have server enabled, okay? And this number here should be the same as the number over here in uh, Nina. And the first time I set it up, by the way, the two programs would not communicate with each other. So I had to do some research on cloudy nights and on the uh, Nina uh, and Stellarium forums until I could figure out what to do. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Just simply go over here, <clears throat> click on server enabled. I also uh, clicked on enable automatically on startup and then save the settings as default. That way I don't have to go back and do this again. Okay. Now what I can do is I can go over here into Stellarium, and you'll see that I have um, uh, put in, I want to image here, uh, NGC 2024 and the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula. And so I kind of moved around here until I figured out a the spot where I want the camera to be located, okay? Now that I have that, now that I have my position, okay, uh, set up. Okay, now I can just simply go over here to Nina. Now I've got it framed in Stellarium. Go over to Nina, and this is a pretty cool little tool. Go over to framing, okay, and see this little button right here, this odd little button right here? If you hover over, over it, it says get coordinates, for, or coordinates from planetarium software. If I click on it, 
it is going to go right over and it is going to grab the RA and D and declination for my object, for what I had framed in Stellarium, and bring it over here. You can see this is framed up just exactly the way I want it to be set up. Now, I can I could give this an object name if I want to, uh, so we could do that. And then what we can do, once we have that set up, is simply go over here and add as sequence target. Click on add as sequence target. Now it takes us over to the sequencer. You look here, that's this button right here. It's taken us over to the sequencer, and here's where we're going to set up everything that we need to do to, to image this particular object. The first thing that we want to do, I want to show you this, is um, uh, I'm going to leave sequence mode on one after another. You could change this to loop. I'm not sure why you need to do it this way. Honestly, I don't know what this button is, so I've just left it to the default. I want to start my guiding, okay? I want the program to slew to target. So when I set up tonight, all I'm going to do is polar align. I'm not going to do a star alignment. I'm not going to do anything else, okay? I'm going to polar align my EQ5, my HEQ5. I'm going to walk into my garage, and I'm going to basically press this start button. The first thing that it's going to do is it's going to uh, start guiding. It's going to slew over to the target, and then I'm going to have it center the target. And what that's going to do is it's going to use those coordinates that we set up in the framing tool, and it's going to center up my camera into the very center of where the framing is telling it to go. It's going to center up my target exactly the way I had it framed, which is incredible, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click on autofocus. And because I have an autofocuser, I'm gonna do it on start so that the, before it even starts uh, sequence or, or imaging, it's going to slew over to the target, center it up, then it's going to autofocus. It's going to get my autofocus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going, there's a number of options here. I could refocus after a certain amount of time, after a certain number of exposures, uh, exposures after a certain amount of temperature change, or I can simply have the program monitor the HFR and if there's a certain percentage of increase in the HFR, then it will pause and refocus and then restart the sequence. And that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to set that at 10%. Now, if I was up here and, you know, I was, I was going to use elapsed time, then I could set the time, you know, to maybe every 30 minutes, every 60 minutes toward a certain number of exposures. You'll have to figure out what works best. In my opinion, it seems to me the most natural thing to do is use this HFR increase. Now, if you know of a reason why I shouldn't do it that way, please put it in the comments and I will consider that. But in my opinion, if it's monitoring the HFR, um, you know, and let's say it gets out to 10 exposures, why pause there and refocus if there's really no need to? So I'm just going to set the after H HFR increase and leave that at 10%. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on, this is the total number of subs that I'm going to take. Okay. And so I am going to set this up to do, um, I'm going to be shooting five minute subs. So every 20 of those, uh, every 20 then uh, subs would be one hour. And I think that I'm going to have about three hours worth of total imaging time tonight. So I'm going to set that to 60. I'm going to set my time to 300 seconds. Okay. This is my lights that I'm shooting. I don't need to worry about filter. Binning is one by one. I'm going to dither. And I like to dither on every frame. But if I wanted to do every other frame, I could, you know, increase this to two or three or, or whatever number that you need to do. Okay. Once I have that set up, then I can go and I can save it to a file, okay? And I've got that set up in my file system. Let me go over here real quick and show you. There are some files that you, some things you need to pick out for your file system. Uh, so for instance, 
uh, here I'm saving all of my images as FITS files. Then I, I selected this image file path. I've set up a, um, a um, uh, on my computer, I have set up a, a directory called Nina Data, okay? You can see here, and that's where it's going to send all of my files. And then my image file pattern, you can select from all of these things down here, but I'm gonna have the image type, date and time, filters, uh, actually, I really don't even need the filters, but I'm going to leave that there. Sensor temp, exposure time, uh, frame uh, number, and gain. Uh, that's all of the information that's going to go into my file name, okay? So I've got all of that set up. Okay, now let me go back over to the sequencer. Go back to the sequencer. I set my gain. I've got my offset. So tonight, when I get ready to image, all I have to do is go over, do my, um, do my um, uh, initial polar alignment. Then I'll come in, I will click this button, and Nina is going to do the rest. It's going to slew over to my target. It's going to plate solve until it and, and uh, adjust the uh, telescope until it is centered exactly on the uh, framing that I set up in my framing tool. Then it's going to focus my telescope, and then it's going to start imaging. It's going to monitor the uh, focus, and so if it gets out of line, if it if the if the uh, begins to fall out of focus, it's going to make all of those adjustments. So that's how I've got it set up. Now, some of you that know Nina better than me, take a look at this. If I'm doing something wrong, please put it in the uh, um, comments, and I'll be glad to go back and fix it up. But uh, that's how simple it is. I click on this button and then I can sit in the house and monitor it. Now, some of you say, well, I like to be outside and be able to, you know, be around my telescope. That's great, except tonight it's going to get down into the 20s uh, here where I'm at. And so I don't want to be outside as, as, as you know, I want to be inside, warm, comfortable, you know, uh, drinking a nice uh, Diet Coke and, uh, you know, eating something uh, while I watch TV and let the, compu let the computer and the telescope do everything else. Oh, by the way... I've also got this set up so that it will do an auto meridian flip. And we'll talk about that another time. You could set that up, but when it gets to the meridian, it's going to take care of the flip, uh, refocus everything, and everything will be set up, okay? And um, that is an amazing tool. We'll see how it works. Um, give me about, uh, about another two hours, and then we'll be set up. I will get my polar alignment done, and then we'll come back and we'll watch Nina slew and get this set up and execute our imaging plan. Stick around. Okay, I just got my uh, polar alignment finished using SharpCat and I'm going to open up Nina and we're going to see how it does on um, getting started here on my imaging plan. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my camera Click on focuser, open up, uh, start my focuser up, connect to my telescope. And I'm going to go ahead and unpark the telescope now. And then I'm going to hit guider, turn my guider on. There's PhD2. Okay, so it's up and running. That looks good. I'm going to go over here to my sequence. And let me go ahead and load in. NGC 2024. This is my imaging plan. Now you'll notice here I've got start guiding turned on. I've got salute to target, center target. I need to make sure that's on. Just checking all of my settings here, making sure everything's set up correct. Auto focus on start and after HFR increase. Okay, let's watch it and see what it does. Let's go ahead and press start sequence. Oops. Oh, I have not, um, I've not turned on my cooler, camera cooler. So let's go over to equipment, camera. I'm going to go ahead and turn the cooler on. And that's going to take a few minutes to cool down. 
but we still can go ahead and start the sequence because by the time we get ready to start imaging, it should be ready to go. Okay. Start sequence anyways. Okay. All right. So now Nina is going to start. And uh, the very first thing it is going to do is slew the telescope over that direction. By the way, I do have cart to seal hooked up so we can watch it. This white um, box here is the telescope uh, slewing over. So that's what it's doing now. Let me go ahead and pause this while it slews. I'm going to pause this periodically. Okay. Now the first thing it's doing after it's slewed over to the target is it is going to take an image to plate solve and find out where it is located at. You'll see this is the little um, five second picture taken. So it's a little bit off. This is the Orion Nebula, it looks like here. So it's a little bit off from the horse head, but um, we have a plate solve match. It is going to go ahead and slew the telescope again. That's what it's doing right now. You'll see here, um, you can follow the progress down here. Telescope not inside tolerance, re to target. Now it will go ahead and take a picture. It's going to go ahead and take an exposure. These are taking, I think, 10 second exposures, by the way. See it right here. Okay, now it debears the image. It will plate solve that image. And we're getting a little bit closer because I'm pretty sure that's out to knack right there. Okay, it's on target. Now it is going to run the autofocus um, sequence. And by the way, on the autofocus sequence, I set that up. I'll show you how I did that once it starts um, the imaging um, uh, sequence here in the plan. But what I, I will do is I'll show you that on the autofocus, I have it, it takes two images and then averages those images uh, together. So instead of just taking one image, kind of calculating the HFR and then making the adjustment, it, it averages two. And that helps if you're not having the best scene, which tonight we don't have, and uh, gives you a much better autofocus. Takes a little bit longer roughly twice as long, um, but the reality is I think it gives you a little bit better autofocus. I'll show you how I set that up in just a couple of seconds. I'll go ahead and pause this while it runs through the autofocus sequence here, and we'll take a look when it's uh, done here of the uh, graph. Okay, you can see here that my autofocus is getting a... Uh, a curve here, it's starting to calculate a curve. What it does is it takes an image, it'll make an adjustment to the uh, to the focus, and then it will uh, make the calculation and it will find the optimal focus, the best focus to get the lowest HFR value. And that's for all of the stars in the picture, not just one star. And that's, I think that gives you a lot better auto focusing routine when it does that but you can see here it is putting my graph together calculating what's the best um what's the best uh position for the focuser and it will be done here in a minute or two it takes a little while to run this but You'll see there it moved the focuser just a little bit, set, lets it settle. You can watch the progress right here. Now it's exposing. I'm going to take a five second exposure. You see, I'll do two exposures for each position on the focuser. Okay. And it probably has one or two more images that it'll do here. Uh, but it's getting a pretty nice graph. You can see here you're getting this nice curve, and it will use that to calculate the best focus position. Okay. I know this is kind of boring just kind of watching this thing run, but... Um, it's amazing that all you have to do is press the start button and, and think about it. It has slewed the telescope. It has found my object. It has focused the telescope. And um, 
Looks like it's pretty happy here. This is the HFR value 2.72. The other night, by the way, I was imaging on this same target, and it was roughly right around, I think it was a, around three uh, that night. Um, conditions are slightly better, at least for the first part of this evening. Um, there we go. It has already started now to run our imaging sequence. If I go over here to imaging, um, you'll see here is uh, the last little uh, target. This is the uh, uh, last probably five uh, second uh, image that it took. Uh, you can see my guiding is doing pretty good uh, right now. It's at uh, 0.82 total RMS. Um, I will pause it until we get pretty close to the first um, of these. I've got, um, um, I've only done about 30, 40 seconds now of imaging on this first five minute sub. When the first sub's done, we'll take a look at it. So I'm going to go ahead and pause right here. Okay, this uh, first image is about, uh, about a minute and a half away from coming up. It's still imaging, but I, I did want to walk through. Uh, this imaging tab. If you're over here and you click on imaging, this is what you'll have. I have not altered this at all. This is the um, default settings. You'll notice up here I have my camper information. It will show my gain, offset, the fact that I've got it. It's uh, I'm deburying it. That's what this check mark means. Um, right now the cooler power is running at 23%. The chip temperature is minus 10 degrees. Um, this is where you can control the cooling uh, temperatures if you want to make it cooler. Um, uh, it, you can also then at the end of the session uh, turn the cooler off and turn the warmer on and warm it up over a number of minutes. That is very handy. Um, you can also switch this over to the focuser if you wanted to manually focus. Um, if you had a rotator connected, which I do not, uh, you could use uh, this to adjust the rotation. Um, this is for the filter wheel. I don't have a filter wheel, so I could really uh, take this off if I wanted to. I do not have a flat panel, so neither of these are really germane. But I left them on there so you could see uh, what they look like. This is the telescope. Uh, this is, um, we've got the Meridian in two hours and five minutes. And um, I will show you a little bit later. Um, if if we get to the meridian, I, I don't know if the cloud cover is going to hold up for me to get all the way to the meridian. If we don't, I'll do it another time. But, um, oh, here's my first image that came up. You can see uh, here's the Horsehead Nebula. Here is the Flame Nebula. This is uh, Altanac, which um, with the, I'm, I'm shooting tonight with the L um, Extreme um, filter, du dual band filter uh, from Optolong. And it does sort of make a big problem with halos around really bright stars. Now, Altanac, if you know anything about this, it is a really tough star anyways. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a picture of this particular object, the uh, Horsehead and the Flame Nebula, that didn't have Altanac really overexposed. It's really tough. But anyways, that's the first picture. You can see here it puts it in my image history. Uh, so here's our telescope information here. It just tells us what we're looking at, when we're going to have the meridian flip. Uh, again, as I said a few moments ago, I'm not sure that I will get there tonight. I'm hoping to, uh, but the, the fact is I've got some cloud cover coming in a little bit later on, and I don't know if conditions will hold up. But if it does, I'm going to let you see the meridian flip, which, by the way, will happen automatic. Uh, Nina will take care of all of that. Um, works really, really well. The one thing I will mention is if I go over here to EQ Mod, for my setup, I needed to make a little bit of an adjustment. You see these little yellow lines here? I had to adjust uh, the, um, the meridian flip. I had to adjust the uh, mount limits to allow it to go a little bit past the meridian um, so that uh, I could get a good meridian flip. Otherwise, it will shut down the uh, EQ mod and it wouldn't work. But once I made this adjustment, which was very easy, um, maybe I'll do another video one day on how to make that adjustment. It is super simple. Uh, you can look in EQ mod to find out how to do that. But you'll see here, I've, I've made my, uh, uh, just increased my mount limits a little bit uh, so that I can uh, actually um, uh, track for a little bit past the meridian, okay? 
Um, so that shows you all my telescope information here. Up here are the statistics. You'll see the width of my uh, image, uh, the height. Uh, the um, uh, th This is all of the, um, um, you know, um, detailed digital information, which I don't really understand the median, the standard deviation, uh, the mean, the minimum. I do know this tells me the number of stars, which is 136, bit depth at 16. My HFR, this is what my focuser is tracking. Uh, that's the average of all of the stars in the image, the HFR. Um, and if that uh, tracks up too far, then it will run their autofocusing routine again. Okay, and down here, this tracks my HFR history, and it will put some little dots on there as we go through the night, um, as we take more images, and then when it needs it, it will run the autofocus routine. This is the imaging. Um, uh, this is if you're... Um, um, if you're not running a plan and you click on this, it will take a 15 minute a second exposure um, and all of this information. But I'm running a plan right now, so it's actually running five minute long exposures with um, 140 gain, 10 offset, and uh, so it's running that. This is the active sequence. You, you'll see I'm, I'm imaging uh, image number two out of 60, exposure time 300, uh, by, uh, binning a one by one, gain 140. And so if I pause that, by the way, I can start it right back up. If, if I happen to later on, if the clouds come in and I don't get to finish this particular uh, imaging run, uh, of 60 images, it will save that it where and it will pick up right where it left off the next time I go into Nina. So overall, this is a pretty cool uh, program. I'll be honest with you, uh, it makes imaging very simple. You can see I came out, I polar aligned, I hit a button, it took care of everything else for me, which is awesome because it is freaking cold out tonight and I did not want to sit out there uh, doing all the star alignment, doing all of the other stuff, trying to focus manually, going out every hour or so to check the focus with the batten off mask. Everything here is now automated. And it's running very well. So I'm going to pause this. I'll come back a little bit later, and I'll show you. Um, uh, if we get to the Meridian flip, I'll show you that. Um, and uh, and then we'll it, it, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'll show you the finished product. Uh, by the way, you're going to hear me referring to this. I, I I think I said it in the introduction as well. I'm going to be referring to this as Max's Nebula. That's my new grandson, and I am taking these images to make a poster so that he can hang it up on his bedroom because on the night that he was born, I was imaging this object. And I want to add a little bit more data to it. That's why I'm out here tonight. Okay, we've got our second image up. There it is. You can look pretty good. Uh, focusing, holding on pretty good. You can see that it added to that. Came over here, added my second picture um, into the image history. And uh, okay, things are going well. We're just going to keep imaging for a while. Okay, this is the finished product. This is about uh, nine hours worth of total imaging time. I captured this with my ZWO183MC Pro camera and Orion ED80T refracting telescope. Um, overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, obviously, you can see here Altenac, uh, this star right here, always comes out a little bit overexposed. I don't know that I've ever seen a picture of the flame and Horsehead Nebula without that star a little bit overblown, but I'm pretty pleased with it. You can see down here, I've got a uh, fairly good detail in this area down here. Um, also, by the way, I captured this using the Optolong L Extreme filter, um, and then I processed it uh, as a dual band image. This is actually an HOO image. Um, basically what I did, I stacked it in um, Astro Pixel Processor, split the two channels, then put them back together, and this is the image I came across. Now, let me show you what I'm going to do with this. I'm actually looking at uh, ordering uh, my grandson 
a poster of this. I put this together on a, a website called Zazzle, and you'll notice here it says Max's Nebula, a.k.a. the Flame and Horsehead Nebulas, and then it has the date on which it was imaged, which also happens to be his birthday. And so I think I'm going to order that for him so we can hang it up in his room. But anyways, overall, um, Nina is a great capture program. I'm going to tell you, I'm... I'm really considering because of uh, its powerful features and also its ease of use once you get used to it. Um, I think it's going to be my main imaging software from here on out. I really, really like it. Um, and so we'll see. I'll play around with it a little bit, maybe do some other videos to show you some other features. But this gives you a little bit of an introduction. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, subscribe to my channel, click on uh, not only subscribe, but like, and then share it with your friends to help me spread the word. I'm hoping by the end of 2021 to have a thousand subscribers on my channel. You can help me by sharing it, or if you haven't already subscribed, do so today. Thank you for tuning in. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.